Hey everybody, it's me again, Akasha Wolf. Um, today, um, I'm going to be talking about um, basic tips and stuff to be a witch. Um, I've been getting this question a lot from uh, quite a few people, and the word witch, you don't, like, even if you practice witchcraft, you don't have to call yourself a witch. Um, a lot of times, though, people use the word witch, so that way it can, in some way, scare off people somehow. Like, it does work, <laughs> believe me, because, like, it'd be like someone uh, messing with um, my necklace just to pick on me, and then I'll tell them I'm a witch, and they back off automatically. But, you see, it's sort of like a name of power in some way. Now, to be a witch, it's to not just cast one spell, you know? It has to be something you're, like, into. To where casting spells, you know, you enjoy doing it and you continue doing it. Or even, like, waiting for the full moon and the new moon to, like, make blessed moon water. And to meditate and to, like, study different... Um, different crafts, learn the history of witchcraft and like where it began, depending on what you're learning though. Like some, some of you may like to do like the Celtic type of witchcraft and stuff like that. There's like all kinds out there that you can do. And some say um, magic doesn't have a color, you know, like black magic and white magic. Um, and there's even so-called gray magic so that that way like, let's say your spell starts out white, you know, you see it as a white, you know, spell, but then it can turn gray, like, let's say you're making a wish and you're not specific about it, it can kind of go bad, so they call it, like, gray, but you get what you want, when in the first place, it wasn't to harm anybody, but in some way it did, like, let's say you made a wish for money and prosperity, and maybe your grandmother or your mother dies, and you get an inheritance from her. You see how that kind of backfired a little bit? That's an example of so-called gray magic. But it all depends on what you believe in. Um, some of the basic little tools and stuff for being a witch or doing the craft would have to be a cauldron. You don't have to have this stuff, but um, everyone's been asking me about this. So a cauldron a wand or athame. An athame is a two-sided blade. I do not have one with me at the moment, but I will get one. I've been wanting one for like ever. But usually, um, in books it says that the wand is supposed to represent the female and the athame is supposed to represent the male. But there's no rules that a female cannot have an athame. And even if there was, I'd get one anyway. Um, and another thing would be to have to have a pentacle. This one is kind of a little bit of a ghetto one, but you see it's an example that if you can't afford this stuff, you can make it yourself. Even though this is doesn't look all professional and stuff or something that you might see in a movie, it doesn't mean it's not going to work. It's going to work. Um, and this I did not buy. If you've seen my other videos, I've told you this came from a chair. And this is kind of like a review, I guess you could say. And a chalice would be another one. You see? This doesn't, like, a chalice does not have to be, like, a metal one with, like, pentagrams and stuff on it. It can be like this. I got this at the 99 cent store. It's what it represents is what matters. You can even use a regular cup. But what you're supposed to do is only use it for your rituals. Um, a lot of times, witches, will, witches or warlocks, will um, keep it covered up until they use it for what they need it for. And another thing, as like a number one thing, like, you know, be a witch, is to learn the craft. And here I brought just a few books um, to recommend to all of you because I'm getting those questions too. And let's see. These aren't all my books. I'm gonna be doing a video on books of witchcraft and stuff, but these are like good for beginners. 
sorry, there's like flies everywhere that's taking off. This one is Living Wicca. Um, with Scott, I don't know how to say the last name. Um, but this is Living Wicca. It has a lot of basic stuff, uh, stuffs, the, uh, uh, sorry. It has a lot of basic stuff in it. Um, like, you know, how to live Wicca and everything like that. It's good to get a book as a guideline because it'll like, I don't know how because like I'm always, um, I have a bunch of books, but I always hop between it and stuff like that because I already have like what I've learned from my family. But a book is a really good guideline. And this is a really good one to start out with. But let's see what else we have. I have, uh, and there's also this one. This one will give you, this is a spell craft for teens. This is a very good one. It tells you how to cast a circle, tells you all about incense, and how to undo spells and do spells. Um, it tells you about the craft and everything, and different things you may need. And how to set up an altar. I will go over all this with you guys through different videos. But, yeah. So, this is a really good one. I like this one, so. This one, uh, the Witch's Master something book. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry, like, a, I sound like a bad reader. I'm just in a rush. I don't want to make this too long. Um, this one is really, really good. It's like a dictionary. Almost. And what happens is it starts from A to Z, of course. And they have like air magic, air incense, fra fragrances, amulets, and am magic animals. And it goes down to like banishing, banishing rituals, and all this other stuff. Even like dragon magic and candle magic, binding, ice, pentacles, love. It, it goes on. But it has all kinds of stuff in here. It has spells, it has um, stones symbols, maybe words that you don't like know that you've probably heard before, sort of like um, lingo, you know, which is lingo. Um, there's also this one, uh, Return to the Old Ways of Witchcraft. This is for like, you know, maybe those of you that want to get like deeper back into witchcraft, like when it kind of first started out, this is a very good one too. As you see, it's like, we bought this from like, a library though. We bought it so we can see it. And for those of you that are probably like maybe into the more Celtic side of magic, you know they have Celtic uh, women's spirituality. Um, this book is to like open the power that every female has, apparently. So it says in the book. That's if you believe it. <laughs> but this is also another good one. It's good for girls. Sorry boys, but that's a good one. Another one is energy secrets. Energy is a really big thing in magic. Like, when you do spells, you can get drained. And meditation is always recommended to like regain your energy. And this book has all kinds of things on energy. It has everything on your chakras and even like um, ways that you lose energy and how you will know if you're spilling energy from any of your chakras. And that happens so much to people, they just don't know it. Like you could have headaches or something and you could be spilling from your crown chakra or your brow chakra. So that's another good one. And sorry if it seems like I'm going too fast. But one more thing about being a witch is to have a symbol of power. For example, a lot of witches you will see wearing a pentacle. Okay? This is one I just got, and I will be doing um, a video on uh, symbols of power. And then I'm wearing another one, Triquatra. This can be like the representation of three sisters or three generations of which is, which is what's going on in my family, but yeah, so, um, let me see if there's anything else I'm missing, 
so that was kind of like a speedy quick video well at least I think it is I don't know how much time I have on here but I will be doing another video today like right now um, on spirits and witchcraft that spirits is a big thing that happens in witchcraft and you will know why in the next video so um, goodbye and if you have any more questions let me know down at the bottom if you want me to redo this video I will um, with more details so blessed be Bye.